Because men are, are there with the power and money only. That's why they can't date women with money. Because without money, you guys are fucked. Would you say that you don't need a man? I do. That's a problem. I need money, I need men. Why do you want to separate the two? If I have money, well, what, what, what automatic conclusion did you drew and said? Then that means you don't need a man. No. I need money because I love good things. And I know life is expensive. And I know as a black person, I must break the generational curse. But I need a man because I'm a human being and I'm a woman. What's that got to do with the other? This is The Hustler's Corner. Ladies and gents, welcome to another exciting episode of The Hustler's Corner. Today I'm very excited because like, I'm with my sister. She <laughs> seems like my blood sister because of how we get along. How we got along even from when we started working together. And just from a distance from time to time, we'll keep in touch over the phone. And I'm just so happy with her growth over the past couple of years. So before we get things started, let's go straight up to that chop chop sign on the count of one, two, three. Click, 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 click. Click that like button, everybody. Click, 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 click. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe. Let's go. Click that subscription button. Why? Because we want the community to grow. And thank you. We're almost on 50,000 subscribers. It really means a lot. You guys do know the goal by the end of this year is 100,000 subscribers, which I feel we would have achieved. I actually think we're going to knock it out of the park even before December. But let me tell you the person that I have here. She's a South African comedian and entrepreneur. She's also an actress, popularly referred to as the queen of the Zulu comedy. And she's known for being the first local female comic to record a one-woman show DVD. That is back in the day. Nowadays, Sega Cruz at Boma Netflix. She is cruising nicely. <laughs> and nowadays, she's not only just the queen of Zulu comedy, she's the queen of Zulu comedy that travels all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, world-renowned international comedian, Celestine too. You can this one. I know that's very well renowned. No, my mommy has to touch my Paranga out. Thank you, thank you so much. I forever appreciate you for one thing. When you gave me that call to join Massive Metro that year, and I don't think you realized who you were. The fact that you had started that as a movement for me it was not even a radio. It was a movement because it it had so many futuristic elements as a as a thing that you were doing there um so when you call me you don't understand it, you changed my life i was in pumalang finishing a show i had a show in pumalang and i was driving out a, a, a casino you called me i'm like damn i haven't done a radio i haven't done nothing like i don't even know what got you to think of me to do radio i know i can but to have someone like you on that space to fully believe that i can do it I'm, I'm really I'm forever, I'm forever grateful for ah, that. Book. Like, seriously, I am. Zekaya. I am so, like, because I got calls now for radio. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you better know. <laughs> As everyone has asked, have you done radio? Oh, yes, I've done Massive Metro, you know. <laughs> yeah. And you did a great job, by the way. I had a great time. You made me work with Zola. Imagine, yeah, I was so looking at fun. Zola, I'm like, me not cutting seven and Like, you, you, yeah, you, you shifted my, 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 my place in the space. You you understand? Like you, mm. you put I feel I felt like I moved as a comedian to do acting on this by and then you gave me another platform to look at. Mm. Which is great. I am definitely looking at. Nya Just bong. that I'm busy a comedy for now. Yes. But thank you, thank you. This is the thank you. Nya More it's fire. Nfunugut, <laughs> <laughs> I am so proud of you, Celeste. From those days at Massive. Just the, the few years from mm -hmm. then to now where you are, yeah. you've literally evolved into becoming an international comedian. Did you ever think Guti, one day people will be saying international comedian Celestin Tool? Yeah, yeah, well, it has been my dream. By the way, guys, you know, we are unemployed and it's a Friday. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How are you? We're having a glass of wine. It's, it's, a, it's a Friday afternoon. You know? It's a Friday afternoon. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. No, uh. Mm. Definitely, I've, I've forever thought of myself as someone who has to do something great. I've never not had that feeling. The first time I knew that I might like something, and I didn't even know English, I didn't know anything in my car, we long drop toilets, but I saw a picture, <laughs> I saw a picture of a cooker who go back. Something about her said to me, resonated. I felt I'm here. Oh, it doesn't make sense. 
But mm. I felt whatever this woman is doing, it's what I would like to do in future, whatever it is, from the picture. I didn't even know English, but her picture has always, so when the sister acting started, personally, I've always seen myself in this, like, oh, president, you know what I mean? Like, you see mm. yourself, you're like, why am I drawn to this? And I've always known that definitely I'll, I'll do something great. But I never knew what, what it was. At some point, I thought I was going to be a great business person, like, you know, because I wanted to do social working. I didn't end up not doing social work because uh, too much emotional stuff. I was like, you, I ain't gonna get traumatized. As a nurse, my mom is a nurse. As I cause I'm in full poison, I don't know. But I, I've always put myself in a space of service. Mm. So I knew that whatever it is that I'm doing has gonna it will have an impact of some sort. And she's correct, guys. You always know. It's like one of those. You know, I always say to people when a Celeste um. Black Coffee started what he was doing wow. as a kid. I started what I'm doing as a kid. Trevor Noah started what he's doing as a kid. A lot of the times, what you're passionate about and what you do so often, most likely, even if you've skipped it, you go back to it mm. at some point. Because that's your passion. That's the, I think that's yourself. Now, let me start. Mm. And I finished all my schooling at Skawin, which is a township. Um, so I was able to go to Skawin, so I was able to go to Skawin for my lower primary, a tambolini for my higher primary. Cool. I, like, I literally had three high schools. I never changed until I finished school. Yeah. So I, three, I had three schools all my life, uh, yeah. throughout my life. And I went to tech and I did entertainment technology, which was lighting, sound, stage. People don't know, I used to rig lights. I used to. Oh, well, so you're part of the crew? I used to. That's why I'm, I'm very close with the crew. Mm. I used to, like, but it was a live performance crew. Uh, and, and theater, I did stage management in Grahamstown when I was uh, doing, as a student, we used to go to Grahamstown to work for the festival. So I used to be a stage manager there. The arts festival. The arts festival, yeah, for different theatre pieces, depending on the theatre that they placed you in to be a, sta a stage manager for. And then, um, when I finished, I first, which is why I dropped out, because when I was supposed to do my in-service training, I got hired by Demi Venturas, who it was this white guy from Durban who had a production. And the first job I had was a photo sporter for the Phantom of the Opera of, for young kids, for the teenagers. So they had a, a, a Phantom of the Opera musical. I was hired uh, as a photo sporter. And then I went to um, Gear House to work. Again, I thought I'm there as well to finish my in service training. Also, I started working. They put me on, you know proper life performances. I worked at Luther Van Ross performance. I worked when, for the first time ever, in being introduced to Rastafarian reggae concerts. I was, it was a Benning Spear. I was full of sporting Benning Spear. Hey, wow, but it was interesting and eye opening. And actually, until today, I listened to um, Benning Spears' album. Actually, big up to which the is spirit. love. Yeah. Big up to the spirit of the rest of our Rest in peace, I'm not to do well. Rest in peace, sir. You know, yeah. Rest in peace, yeah. So I, I, I think. Uh, I was fascinated by who he was, what you, you know, and it's a, it was a great thing to that to that space. I enjoyed. The only thing I didn't like, uh, I was I was a tomboy, but it made me feel like I'm too manly. Uh, if you see, I've got pink nails and stuff. I'm always making sure that I I, I put that because I've always found myself in a space that is not really ladylike. Mm. You know what I mean? Because mm. when I was doing it, gear house, I used to wear black. Chris all the time wearing caterpillars. I looked like a hey, man mm. and do rig stages. There's no time for nails when you're gonna have to rig the lights, mm. you know. So I loved it, but when I when I was still at tech, I thought I'm gonna do sound for radio because I did a bit of few months on the course FM when I was still a student. So I thought I'm gonna be this. I've never not been in the space. 
now that I think about it. I've never not been in the space because even if when I did have jobs, I used to from time to time find myself either being hired for this and the other. Um, one of the things that I want to ask, I mean, I remember I was interviewing with sis, um, Ayanda Tabeta. By the way, congratulations, my sister, on your yeah. beautiful pregnancy. Very proud of you. Very proud of everything you've achieved. She's so Us pretty, that one. Oh, she's And stunning. her sister. Oh, no. Oh, oh, I don't know her sister. But anyway, mm. Usis Ayanda Tabete said to me, Usiso, when I was working in corporate, all the time people used to tell me, when are you belong on screen? When are you belong on screen? Nami Nangsakula, people used to say to me, eh, when I voice, I when you yeah. say the radio, when you say... <laughs> Did you ever get that where people kind of saw your, your, your potential? Yeah, it's comedy. People that always know me, like literally, people that know me are not surprised at all that I'm a comedian. In actual fact, people that know me still believe that I'm funnier off stage. <laughs> <laughs> Which is crazy. Which is like, I don't know how to channel that person. Yeah. I think by the time I get to be that funny, like when they say I'm funnier off stage, I think, I think I'll, I'll, have, <laughs> I'll have, to, have to reach that person. I think also it's a comfortability when you, with the people that you know. Mm. So there's no limits. This is not a material. This is me. But yeah, I've never not been funny at all. So Not wherever there's... Re not really. This is another thing. Yes, to a certain extent. Excuse me. I'm not really roasting. I like to talk and tell stories. Oh, but so in your storytelling, it's fine. But bashale bashale. There's one time if, if, if my cousin wearing phone patin. What's yo? Ula if phone am it or something. What's an answer? What? We have some phone and bang phone about the bashale guy. Where I saw the crowd laughing. I said, "You are there. There's no way you are there. There's a funny conversation happening there." So I always, you know, have a lovely convers. I love conversating. Period. But then I love storytelling which is why my comedy is also mostly based on storytelling i don't have much of one-liners mm. my jokes have premises laid down for you pa, punchline come back i i'm a storyteller how did the first breakthrough start um when did it happen for you to know what you in i think i can make money by making people laugh because it's something that you grew up doing yeah. it's not easy for people to see actually i can turn this into something that makes me money when did that happen for you? Um, when I was borrowed Amativity TV TV, uh, Richard Pryor. I thought. Um, 2000, I, we used to have Amativity TV. TV yeah, no, I know. A friend of mine. There was no Netflix. A friend of mine's boyfriend borrowed us DVDs. The way Richard Pryor DVD, Kings of Comedy DVD. Queens of Comedy. And Queens. Yeah. And, and, and Eddie Murphy. So, but the, the one that we watched, I think he gave us. Richard Pryor and Kings first and then but I was obsessed I watched a lot of Richard Pryor like for me that was my introduction to comedy I had never watched anyone else ever so I think that kind of helped me because where I understood what it was I saw the the great doing it mm. do I make sense mm, like so. so other people when I watched them they were not really a blueprint at this point yeah because you've watched the best I've, I watched the best and I was like oh so I must just look nice because this is what I do on stage. And, and, and sometimes it's nice not to know how big is the person. Because I was sitting there going, I can do this. <laughs> 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 to a Richard Pryor thing. Yeah. Well, without yeah, without having done it, nothing. I'm like, oh, I can do this. Because I saw myself. I saw him at the party having this conversation that I always have. I was like, okay, maybe I'm wasting time here. Yeah. And I was in between jobs, you know drop this one, try this one, you know what I mean? Like money, unemployment. I went through all of it because officially to start doing comedy was 2010. So this was 2005 when I got activities. And then once I saw that, funny enough, things fell into place. A friend of mine was looking for me while I was looking for them. When I called them, they're like, no, there's a, a show in church. I always tell people my first gig, I'm a, I'm a comedian that's never had a kick for free. <laughs> <laughs> You've never had a kick for free? My first gig, I was, I was, it was a church and I was paid. So it wow, was prayed and paid for. Already? Yeah. And how did it happen? Somebody called you? A friend of mine, Mr. Kumalo, knew me. And yeah. I knew him. And then I was like, oh, I saw you guys doing this thing. What not to be sick fool? I come to church in a 500. It's not a shop. So I did it. And then after his show in church, Monabis booked me for 99 pence and to the condom show. 
Nakona te young na mali ne two thousand. No, now it was gonna be a big show in November. Oh, okay. Umbone only uh, uh, on that church gig with Uste. Uste booked me for that one, paid me five hundred. And then I thought I am officially a comedian, so he's coming there with a negotiation. I <laughs> you know two thousand. I'm not sure. 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 i it was a Koning Cambria Mas Social up a morning side that happened next to the uh, July race hall, whatever. Yeah, that's a craving. Yeah, that's a craving. Mm. There's, a, there's a huge co hall. We did it there. Shout out to my brother yeah. Felix Lope. Big up, my yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> Ukota ekon wanza show to fala ne wind. Ndo Tom Sult na sifuna ekon. Ngoba ngoba mvule ekon kusho vele ngoba uingani ngono sala soldier ne purity. Felix Trope. Insane. So I the, all of them they had already done comedy. So that's how I started in 2005 November. That was my official big show. I did. And then after that Monobis had booked me through and through. And in 2010 I decided okay, you know what? Let me just do this officially. And I left all the jobs and to do comedy. Your life has changed since then. So much. And it has been such a belief. It's, 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 it has been more than just changing my life. It has defined my life. Do you understand? Like it's, it is really the purpose. It is beyond the purpose. It's the calling, if you will. You know what I mean? Like, I know that... There's nothing else in this lifetime that I could have done but comedy. There's one thing I do the best. Other stuff, yeah. But comedy. Don't even wake me up at 3 o'clock. I got punchlines for days. My sister still laughs. I stay with my sister. We slept together from the, like in the same bed when we were growing up. Yeah. And literally, we moved together to Joburg. She's been with me. She knows my first gig to my... She travels with me everywhere. She still laughs at me. And not, she still laughs at what I say. She still finds me fun. Like, sometimes I say, oh, God, there's no way. But she will wake me up. And it's like, but you're hilarious. And this is my sister. When I started working with you, and I was giving you a call to come and um, help us start Massive Metro, at the time, you were a big-time actress on yeah. Isibaya. Yeah. And you killed that character. Yeah. I want to know... While you, then you started doing comedy from 2010, 2011, uh -huh. all the way up to, was Isibaya your first role? Yeah, ever. Yeah, that's what I want to know. How did the breakthrough into acting happen? This was 2012. I moved from Durban because I started doing, I've been doing comedy since 2005, but doing jobs in between, only performing in weekends and here and there until Eugene Koza says to me, listen, I had a show with Eugene Koza in 2009 in Deben. Shout out to Eugene Koza. Yeah, I have not seen him in a while. Yeah. Dopest person that one. Dopest person. Actually, you person. need to come back. <laughs> come sit here, bro. <laughs> Blessings and love, my brother. <laughs> so Eugene called me, and it's nice to have people who are honest in your life. Because the previous night, we had a show at the ICC, Deben ICC. Killed it. Standing ovation at the ICC. Yeah. I killed it. I murdered that thing. Then he calls me in the morning, so I think a friend of mine told him that, wait, Celeste, he said, no, Celeste, he's at work. He's like, what do, what do you mean? <laughs> what does he, what does she, why, why, is, she, why is she working? <laughs> so she called me, he called me and said, listen, please don't do this to me, don't do this to yourself, don't do this to your ancestors, don't do this to God. There's no way you're going to get a standing ovation last night, and in the morning you're going to say, hey, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. And I, at that time, I was working at Exclusive Books as a bookseller in La Lucia. Literally. Wow, what are you saying, what? Yeah, I was a bookseller. Literally. When You've he, been hustling, no? Bruh. <laughs> I was a manager at CNA. I didn't even care. I was like, hey, you manage it, don't try. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> so I, when he was calling me, I was literally walking to work. Like, I had walked into the mall, down the escalators. I remember the phone call. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Didn't give me time. He was not sugarcoating things for me. He was straight on. You are wasting your life. You are wasting everything. 
there's no way you can perform the way you were performing last night and tell me that you still believe you need a job. You are a superstar. I'm not gonna talk to you as my friend if you don't stop this. Literally dropped the phone, walked inside the shop, into the tech manager's office. I quit. I quit. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, you are out. I needed that call. It came right at the moment. I've been toying with the thing on my head. So I needed someone who's going to like he felt like a voice of God to me. Mm. Like he made so much sense. And I had killed. I had an amazing night. And they, they were as artists enjoying their time. They slept at a hotel. Anything's like I'm going to join them for breakfast. I'm at work. What am I talking about? You know? So I left. And they said, no, please uh, try and stay. Because this was, I think it was uh, either the 30th of January or something like that. But it was, I mean, December. It was the, it was the last days of December. Then they said I must save like a month, January. I didn't even finish the month. 2010, I was literally officially a comedian. And I did my first one woman show in August. You see, because I didn't know, I just knew what I felt inside. Sometimes that's why it's nice to go with what you feel more than doing the marketing strategy outside. Because sometimes marketing strategy can mess with you because you're getting so much information that is going to distract what you've already planned at some level. You need to balance the two. So because I didn't have an idea who does a one-man show, who doesn't do a one-man show, how and what, all I knew was, Celeste, you decided to leave, left, leave every job, you said you're going to do this, to myself. I said, if for you to respect yourself, to, to know that you can do this. Because I've seen Richard Pryor's, I'm like, okay, let me prove to myself that I can do it by having an hour show for myself, my show. And I did it. And now the funny thing, because I was working with Monobisi, I hired tear gas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay over to see tear gas. <laughs> wow, or to open for you. Because that's what I've always loved with comedy. We've always coexisted. Yeah. Well, as musicians, we've always coexisted with comedians and yeah. even soccer stars in South Africa. Yeah. We're like one family, right? So I didn't know. Like, now that I think about it, I'm like, you are beginning a crack. And I, they had to open for me in, in, in PE, which was dope. So they did, and I forever respect them for that. Because they opened and they sat there and was like, okay, it's holy, let's book you, and I killed it. And I went to Durban and I killed it. I was like, okay, fine, I'm a comedian. So 2010, 2011, 2011, I felt like actually, because in Durban I've been doing the co club, uh, corporate stuff maybe from like about 2007, six, because I was now popular in Durban, you know. And I felt, I've been, it's redundant. I felt, Nah, man. And, and with Trevor Noah's and Eugene's and everyone else coming to do 99% to do comedy show with us from time to time, I understood that actually I need to be in Joburg if I want, you know, to be up amongst these guys. Because Monabisi, every time when he books them, he books me. I'm like, hey, bro, I must be good enough then to go there. So that's why I left to go to come to Joburg in 2012. And that's the thing, because a lot of our young hustlers out there ask such questions and like, Bras Buddha, when do I know when to leave my nine to five to go focus on my side hustle? How do you know? I think we, li we live in a generation that thinks everything happens from the outside point of view. It happens from the inside. It's not really a matter of what is it that must happen on the outside for you to be ready? It's the feeling that you have. Because you must understand, you have something that you have to bring as well. Like if you don't have that context of understanding as an artist, I enter a space that has already been there. I'm not doing something new, but I'm bringing the new vibe. I'm bringing the new angle. I'm bringing the new energy. That's why there's nothing wrong to have as many podcast people, because we need it. But you are not going to be the same as the next guy. You know, you're not, you're not Mac G. You have your own energy and you've had your own energy. And with you, I mean, it's just a transition from radio. But the whole thing is, it starts with you, though. Mm. It starts with you. For this can to be here, it's what you felt. If you are not aligned, this was not going to be here. I, I, and, and I think most of our generation, we miss that part. The self-work, the inner work, you know. That one is very important. That's the one that, because no one is going to tell you really that now you are ready. Mm. Do you understand? Like, you, if you feel and you are honest with yourself, 
say, okay. Because when I was honest with myself, I didn't have money, but I knew that I, when I come to Joburg, I'm going to kill it. I knew. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know on which stage, who's, I didn't have a manager. I didn't have a plan. In actual fact, I live my life with no, I, I hate plan B's. I never have. They're kind of distracting. Because when you have plan A, there's a lot of faith. You know you're throwing everything into that plan. And, and it's a faith thing. Mm. That's the thing. When, we, when we're toying with these passions and these creative ideas, these whatever business ideas we have, we are, we are playing with faith. We are playing with God. We're saying, let's go. I trust you. You know? And, and it's a levels to it. So I think more, when someone asks, when, when is the right time? Are you aligned? Sort yourself first. This, this, this beautiful life comes from these routines that are boring. And these routines that are boring bring you closer to yourself. Then you are, you are easily aligned. That's why then you are a comedian, the best comedian, you can say, I'm happy for so and so, I'm happy for so and so. Because really, honestly, I understand that when we wake up, we don't have the same mindset. We don't have the same thoughts. We don't have the same passion. We don't have the same emotion. So if I know mine and, 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 and I'm aligned with them, it's good. And I think that's the, that takes a, a lot because you're going to be tested in that route. Mm. It's never an easy route, that one. The faith, because faith tests you. Like, you have to be tested. So I disturbed you when you were still telling me about working on eventually saying, wow, now I am a comedian. This is 2011, 2012, yeah. 2013. I think you were working towards my answer of asking you about Isibaya. Oh, yeah. I, I was now moved to... Back 2012, we were supposed to move in February. Me and my sister, my sister had a test. I didn't have a car, <laughs> she didn't have, she was unemployed. This thing was working most because she was she just left her job in Pretoria, which was very racist. So she was looking for a, a new job, but she also didn't want to be in Durban. And I was like, okay, you know what, you have a car. If I go to Joburg, the main thing I need is a car so that I can go to these club gigs. You do have a car, you're not working for now. I'll hold this while you're looking for a job, while I, I mean, use your car. Which is why he's, now she's a designer, she dresses me up. <laughs> and we've gone. Seven yeah, so if, oh no, my, my nephew that dropped me is also my PA. I was like, there's too, way too many people at home. Nice. Um, so when I came, when we came here, I had smashed her car with a friend. It was a mess. We didn't even have money for <laughs> for the movers. We called my sister when the movers are here. I guess I said, Megali, like, what's this? Major Imali, a true sister. My sister said, Nigga, Sasa, oi. My sister had to drop Fagi Mali, go about shop right. You know those things. Yeah. That's how I go to Joburg. I had nothing. I had, Well, I had basics, I, but I had those rubbish. Even my TV was rubbish, sleeper couch was rubbish. It was enough for us to get by. No, that's another thing. That's a thing. That's, that's a thing about my stupid north. I've never not stayed in the north. Excuse us. I will tell you why. Because I visited my friends in 2009 when I was doing So You Think You're Funny. My friends were staying in North Riding. So after So You Think You're Funny, I started coming to Joburg for club gigs for like three months and go back, two months and go back. I would normally come to North Riding. So when a friend of mine knew that I'm coming, was working at the municipality to Prisca at the time, I asked Prisca, Prisca is my lifesaver. She signed the lease for me for a year. So I was paying her rent for her to pay because I didn't have any nice papers and say, we're eating each comedian, a petela from Devon. So she signed the lease on my behalf she wasn't staying in the flat, but the flat was leased on her name. But I also, Nami was, you know, honest and I paid her every month. Sometimes it was difficult, but I will do that. So that's how I moved to Joburg. So I had a space. I knew that I would go to Joburg, I mean Devon, do club uh, corporate, because Devon would book me from time to time because people thought I, I'm still there. And I lied, I didn't say I'm no longer in, in Devon. So when you book me, I will add money for flights, Mm. And they say, but they, we think we're in Joburg. No, 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 no. But it's fine. I'm coming. You can just give me. I'll, I'll call it money for petrol. Because I'll, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, no petrol. Take a bus at, at night. <laughs> and then Montreal, someone say I'm born la puto. It's not serious la. No kulele ng scarf la. Look very hard. Yeah. Get off. Get off at 5 a.m. in Durban. Go to my sister's and I'm wash. 
take her car, go to a corporate gig, who knows? Come back, back to the bus, back to Joburg. I've made money for the month. Wow. I rent. I keep on staying here to my club gigs. So if I have like three or four corporate gigs in Durban, because Durban I was still big, but I was reaching my ceiling. I was like, it's a matter of time. I can't be doing this forever and ever. Someone is coming. And, and besides, I just need to move. 2012, I made my money in Durban and I stayed in Joburg. People didn't know. And, and then around August, I had a show in Devon at the Playhouse with Tandiswa and... King Ta? Yeah. With, Tandiswa Maswa. Yeah. Wow. And she had asked me to host her launch of Fibele the album. Such a big fan. Oh, huh? no, you don't understand. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, <laughs> I'm an insane fan. I remember when the first time when she was coming out with the first album. Yeah. Uh, we went to the concert. My sisters didn't see where I was. There's Tandis is going, there's Mampele, that's my <laughs> home name. Like, yeah. there's Mampele, my favorite fan. I was, I'm the fan. Like, she knows that. The, oh, no, I was a serious fan. I was a wear the Tandis t shirt. Oh, yeah. my God, I love. I still do. Same um, here, same here. Uh, so, after that show, I was so excited. Uh, it was a, a, such a nice playhouse gig for women's month. It, was, it had. DJs in clear handy so I felt like oh my god I'm performing with these people and I partied and I was I had a great time that weekend and same guy that got me the first gig he called me to take home and call me I said hey can you go to the auditions it's like okay exas all right so yeah did you know when with the audition or act uh, yeah but I was like because it's umchitawam you know oh. I wasn't really I won't lie I wasn't thinking about that thing I was thinking about him this guy has put me on on such great things and it's from time to time, he give me corporate gigs. I mean, if he says I'm going to the audition tomorrow, let me go. But I wasn't really, my mind was like, let me do this because it's a, it was not really, because you know TV things, you never trust them. So I had a hangover for days. <laughs> I told you about this, this. <laughs> when I was nominated. I was like, hey guys, he has good in Yeah, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and guess this that we got there, there was about Pegim Kwan and everyone else. And my audition, yeah, my auditions the next day. Ninja, and if I go park and then go and because I'm like, let me just do this and go. Who's this with par? In my dream, in my wings. <laughs> <laughs> It's all about wings. Yeah. No, it's over right now. You know when you're dying, Figo Felix now is dying. He says, yeah, first, he's not in that night now. I'm going to be so bad. Felix, let's do it together. Say, what about number one? Felix, me, me and Felix first. Not because... So look, she's a sad. She's a bad person. I thousand pelles. I'm not telling. I'm not telling. I said this. So many two pelles. I said I'm going to. And my mind was not in the audition. And then Angus kept on asking me to do so many things. I'm like, I, I, I. And imagine saying I'm born and no good one on it. I give a man to his own. Yeah. Can you have a lens? And imagine, yeah, and bars and gabas and got a couple got and get some yabba for knees. Oh, grandjo, grandjo, grandjo. Yeah, what fun I'm trying to have. And shout out to put the book on my shati. Yeah. Thank you, Angus Gibson. Thank you, Desre Makraf. You guys gave me my first ever acting role. I'll never forget you guys. I always celebrate you. And thank you for changing a lot of South African um, creatives' lives. I think a lot of you guys are, are, are responsible. Mm. I think you guys are responsible for a lot of South African acting talent. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the thank you. Yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm one of them. I'm very grateful for what they did for me. I mean, they um, put me on Izo Izo. Yeah. They put me, I did a lot of things with them, and I'll always just be grateful. But anyway, yeah. So, we did the thing with Felix. I left. They asked me, what do you do? I'm a comedian. Do you have an agent? No. Do you have a picture? No. Literally, they <laughs> took my... Do you have a picture? No. <laughs> I have nothing. And, and it so happened that I had a scarf in my bag. So, when they said, you are a mom, Felix is a husband. I literally, something in my head, because I said, Umam was in my and they explained the character to me. And I literally, yeah, I literally thought, ah, blonde hair, it might not translate. And I looked at my back, and I thought, oh, you know, this calf wrapped it around. <laughs> yeah. That's the picture they took. Oh, wow. And they never called me. This is like towards about my ox, September, I don't know. Yeah. November, they called me to ask, is your name serious? Yes. So, are you seriously a comedian? Yes. Okay. Are you in Joburg or in Devon? I just moved to Joburg. That's it. And I was like, are they hiring me or not? Because I'm waiting for a second call. They only called me in January to say I'm hired. And when I asked to Desra about it, it's like, no. When the tape came, 
all the tapes came from Joe Deben. And actually, that day, I was the only one that was casted on, from that group. Mm. Everyone that I, I auditioned with never made it to the show. But when Des, who was not in the auditions, saw the tapes, immediately said, I don't care what you guys are saying, we're not going to discuss this one is Biaka's wife. So I was literally casted from the first tape. So that's why they didn't call me for the second audition, which was what I was expecting. Mm. So Desri literally booked me from that one tape. And little did you know how big Pogazi was going to be? Not even. I had no idea. In actual fact, when I was hired, I thought, they told me that Mfazo Samakaya, Uvela twice or three times, Jay here. And I was like, oh, this is going to be good for my comedy career. So I would tell you, and I'm figuring I don't give up. Yo, I'm going to be Zaymali about first year. Good. Because after second month, they booked me every day. Per call, imagine. Wow. Because so, <laughs> they also we, we signed the contract with the whole I'm the new actor. I ingest so these are two times a week, three times a week. After a month, after my acting chops, my my script changed. I was written every day. Now what I want to know also is as you are assuming this new character, you're doing it, when did you start knowing what actually man, this character is starting to blow up? When I, when I started getting comments from Babo Charmaine, the actresses, Zikona Sozaga, you know, Christopher, and not people that I'm working with. Yeah. Just outside, like, I met U Ushamein, no Kokos, uh, Kokos has passed on. Um, may, may I saw Kokos, rest in peace, yeah. So, yeah, may I saw rest in peace, yeah. Besinai, lock down. Eh... Uh, so that when they were talking about me, like, yo, we met at some event, and they said, oh my God, this is you. And at that time, they didn't give me a chance to scream for them, because for me, I'm like, oh my God, this is Charmaine, really? Like, you know, they were like, listen, we meet to see, to watch your episodes. We are a humble end. For me, that was too much. For actresses to say, we even have days where we have to meet to see your, your scenes. And I was like, okay. And the director, uh, Danny Miller, shout out to Danny, told me in a month, you're going to win awards. You just, you're too much of a great actor. And I didn't even know. For me, it was a pressure of, Hyunko Sam, my first scene was with the Seba Matoa, and I'm telling you, are you serious? Yeah. Like, and then I did the fuck-ups of the whole fuck-ups. <laughs> yeah. Kwa California, kwa kalu mamte. But hey, fuck off! But sorry, cut, kusho mina. Mkata wen, marosi direct. Oh, I was a fucker. But it'd be like to be like yeah. <laughs> So I, 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 I enjoyed that whole you know, I was really in the Family. which is why I stayed longer. As a comedian, most comedians never understand ah, why we cut it because where I am now, I could have done it maybe in about twenty fourteen to yeah. try and travel overseas and do my stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Um but the 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 understanding of the acting as a as a skill it, I caught a bug, which is why I'm scared to do radio, because mm. I'm, I'm that obsessive. When I do something, I do it. When I don't have time, I... I remember that's what you said when I gave you a call and we started chatting and you were like, but I'm like, but come on. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> I, <don't like laughs> I respect every genre. <laughs> Let me be honest with you. I understand sometimes, obviously, we can do so much as artists. But I think, because I do, it, I see this happening a lot with comedy space, where about TI, they're now trying to do comedy. That's why most people, comedians, had issues with Will Smith, because she, he's trying to be a comedian. For him not to get the joke, it was a, a contrast right there. You know what I mean? Like, because he's trying to be in the space. And, and, and I think what sometimes we do when Usbu moves to acting, you, you are no longer Usbu. Understand that there are people who literally grew up from 13 they were in theaters this is what they do for a living just like you've been doing radio and broadcasting they've been doing this for a living do you understand like it's an act I, must be respected it, it can never i can never come into radio and be celeste i must respect even the guy the new guy that is just doing training saves because that person is in the space for you understand for me it's an mm. extension it's something that but also, it gives you an opportunity to learn. It opens your heart and your space and your mind to know that right now you must receive the skills. 
So that's what I did with the smile, which is why I stayed. I stayed longer because I'm like, I have been dropping out. There's one thing now that I can do and do diligently and do it right. I was very personal about that character. Even the wardrobe will tell you. <laughs> no, for real. It's, Honor Rock. No, Honor Rock was, was an important piece. They had to understand. I had to have a meeting with them to make them understand. They used to laugh. I'm like, no, I don't wear that thing. The minute I wear it, I feel it in my skin. I get into character. I'm, I, I know I'm not, I'm not Celeste. I sacrificed to a point where I didn't do nails, I didn't do lashes. And meanwhile, I'm a pink girl. But I had to. I was like, I will literally do it on the holidays or when I have time to do my shows. I respected my character that much. And then when we started working together, guys, we had such a great time at Massive. It was myself, uh, it was Celeste, it was a whole team, it was Zola, it was Tembi Siete, Zola dope, Seven. Dope. It was yo, Abu Tanelo, we took the yeah. they came, joined. Abu, jeez, Massive became such a journey, and I think we were so ahead of time. Yeah, like, I, t- what, I told someone. What's happening now in the industry is what we were doing. I told someone. Is I what told, we started, I yeah. told someone, because even Touch was after yours, right? No, it was same time. Same time. Myself, uh, ourselves, Touch, and Gareth. Gareth, and their the teams, same. yeah. No. You guys were really on another level. We, because yeah. you were a part of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We, we, I, I knew, like right now, I wish. Maybe I should come back so I can travel <laughs> while I do massive metro Are you abroad. An international <laughs> comedian? Yeah, but I'll be like there in Spain going, yes, today we're broadcasting from Spain because I've got a couple of club gigs here. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, but uh, I think that's a. Uh, it, it, it also gave, it, you gave me a lot from that process. I learned a lot. And, and what I want to touch on as well, because I've been through that journey of having to tap into my different um, talents mm-hmm. to still express my creativity or, 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 or so let me say tap into the the different ways of distributing my talents but I'm using those ways to still express my myself right mm-hmm. I can express myself through creating product I can hey, express Gapis, myself through what you got to do it <laughs> so cool though. And I love I love camouflage. And you'd communicate through TV presenting, through acting, through all these different things, right? But then came a time where you you came and I love our relationship, how you are so honest to be like smoother guys this is where i am now these are the opportunities i'm getting and this is the vision for my life this yeah, is where i want to yeah. go this is where i want to take my comedy yeah. career the, the reason why i'm so proud of you is because you said it to me before it happened yeah and when 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 we went our separate ways at that time it was in good terms yeah and i really wanted you su- to succeed and now us sitting like this it's like uh, a horse, but in, uh, uh, we're coming full circle yeah, for me exactly. to sit down and congratulate you. Uguti, wow, you really did it. You went, yeah. in, you went international <laughs> and you're only, <laughs> only just starting. I'm only just starting and you don't understand. Actually, shout out to my friend Utenji U- 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 for, for booking the, Lyric the-, the Leicester Square Theatre in London for me. Because my friends are going to my club gigs. Mm. And he, she was like, no, bro, don't waste. You have people here. I'm like, me? Really? And it helped me because that's how I got the visa. Then I told you visa. Then he said, on on a Monday. <laughs> and I had to go online to the Leicester Square page and be like, look at my face. People are paying. This is a show. <laughs> yeah. That's how I got the visa. Yeah. They had to look online and understand that I had a show on a Saturday. Yeah. On a Sunday. And I'm still here on a Monday. But to see people that love and know me on a physical space, which is why I also love comedy. In London. Comedy is the truth, bruh. That's one thing I will constantly, and why I'm, I will forever be on this comedy hill, it's because it's the truth. There's no fake people in comedy. Name one. That's why it's the only, it's the only genre that doesn't have slay queens <laughs> and, slay que- and slay kings. I mean, we can't, you can't, you can't sell beauty then. We are here for humor. <laughs> no, you can have all your million following. That's why even the. TikTok comedians, they still haven't done stand up. It's a different story. Stand up is a different ball game. It's a, right? They will tell you they have 15 million followings, but they can't have five minutes on stage. And most of them, unfortunately, have been failing. And and it's and it's and it's rightfully so because naturally, what we do, if Chris Rock is still doing to, going to the club to try something new, who are you? Mm, do you understand? Mm, Comedy, you are as good as 
Last your last show. Gig. That's mm. it. So when you're done recording the new show, I'm done with my Netflix thing. I'm working on an hour for money and men. I'm working on an hour for money and men. I need to make sure that this now, that this hour I want to sell it again to Netflix as an international product. Now I must go outside and perform. I can't thumbs up that. How did your first Netflix gig happen? They called me. Well, let me say in your Netflix break. Yeah, actually funny. I was in 2019. Yeah, 2020 January, 2019, 2020 January, uh, 20, yeah, 2020 January, I had a, a Woolworths campaign. It gave me such a good money. I was like, oh, nice, I'm going to be good for a couple of months. Because <laughs> <laughs> I knew, because I knew. Job, hey. Sometimes guys will get dry. Yeah, I know, you know like, I know. Guys, it, it will get dry for like eight months. Ay, la, la, la. That's why when it's, <laughs> when it's a season where you are making money, you must make sure, you know what, this has to last me as long as, you know what I mean? So, uh, and then I got, I got a call from Paul to say, hey, your movie, Looking for Love, is screening in Toronto. Oh, I was like, movie. what? Toronto? My movie, Canada. Really, me and Pindle Kuala were like, bro, we're leading this movie. Like, let's go. And then they said, okay, we're gonna sponsor your ticket. Let's go. So I went, no Pindile, to Canada. Then from Canada, I was like, okay, I'm in Canada now, New York. Um, I'm friends now with Sidra and Tasha Smith, hey. because I met them. <laughs> I met them through Palance. So. I did Shout that. Out to Palance Lata, yeah, Palance Lata. One of my favorite actors. Actually, I must do something for him now. We have Vietnam, like, your boy, spirit. So he, did, he had a podcast thing and then he invited them and then we, we got along from there. So I was like, okay, Canada, closer to New York, New York, let me go to LA. So I went to LA and when I was in LA, when I was in New York, I got a call from Takunda to say, hey, because there was a, a launch for Peltus's thing in South Africa when I was in Toronto and everyone from Netflix was here. So they were looking for me, I was not here. So they, then they got my number from Takunda, Takunda, Charat, Takunda. Takunda called me and said, listen, um, Natalie wants to see you, blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay, cool. Got the call. Literally, I had a, a WhatsApp conversation with Netflix before it was official. I'm the one who had to tell my agent, like, listen, these people sort it out, because I was like, let me not mess this one up. Let it have lawyers, let it be, you know, what it needs to be and i thought they were going to take my hour and then they said we have a lineup i was like okay cool because i already working on the hour which i thought i was going to perform in 2020 and then COVID happened then i took that 15 minutes then they said okay we were supposed to shoot it in 2020 we eventually ended up shooting it in 2021 september killed it we had two nights of shooting three one rehearsal two nights of shooting the last night i was on fire i was like this thing has to go because it felt, for me, I took it as an opportunity for auditioning overseas. Now when I go overseas, I don't have to worry about telling the club managers, the people, because I still want to do the work. I don't want to come there, you know. Uh, I want to be able to book theatres. That's my plan, uh, to be able to book theatres in different countries, easily like I do lyric, because I think comedy doesn't really rely on the media as much as it relies on people. When Monique was going through what was going through, still filling up the, the, the seats, though, so, as Monique. That's the lovely thing I want. I love about comedy. Like the, there's so much that they and the media that can control. Mm. The rest is yours. Wow. You know, it's so. The dope. narrative is mine. The jokes are mine. The audience is mine. We are not. There's no mixed signals here. People go to the computer tickets, whatever ticket, web ticket, whatever way they get my ticket. They want to see Celeste. However, I curate the show on stage, that's me. That's on me. But my people are there. So to know that you have your people is a very strong Following. thing. Oh, mm. it's not social media. Seats. Mm. Now that I know that next day when I do a show again, at because I'm going back again at Leicester Square, I'm going to have a sold out show. Because now, imagine the show I had at Leicester Square for 400 seats that I had full, full capacity. I didn't sold out, but it was full. Um, more than 300 something. People that were there, it was dope for me to understand that. Okay, and 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 I got the chance to do O2 Arena because Basket Matter the show as well. You did O2 Arena yeah, in I did London. The, yeah, like the, my trip in. I stayed in London for a month because I did my show on the sixth of Feb with Tenjiwe and King Kandoro, who's a comedian from Zim, who's based in London, who said to me, "Listen, can I jump in?" And we made him an MC and another comedian, a female comic who's also from Ghana, Jacinta. 
who's big in Ghana, who also said I'm coming. He was she was going to do basket my show, so she came to my show. So that's why I had that vast diasporic energy on my show. It was mm. that's the most amazing thing. So now we're gonna do it again because we know we have people, and I'm, I have people in New Jersey's and New Yorks and everywhere in America asking for the show. So now I'm like, okay, obviously we're dealing with dollars and pounds and euros. You must move in a certain way, but that's where I am. Comedy is really forced because there are people out there for you. You know, I don't have to have a, a show in Hollywood to have those people coming to fill up the seats. And then I, I started, I mean, it was, uh, geez, those days were great. Guys, we had so much fun. No, it was too nice. We had so much fun. <laughs> but I think what a lot of people don't, well, let me say, what I, don't, what I think a lot of people don't know about you, I don't know if you do reveal that side on your shows, on mm -hmm. your, uh, your spirituality and just your, I don't want to call it wokeness, man, because it's just a word that's being thrown around yeah, a lot. Yeah, it's been overused. But yeah. maybe let me ask it this way. What attracted you to the concept of, let's say, black consciousness or eyes? <clears throat> yeah, I'll, when you look like me, you're going to feel it. It's not going to be something that you read. It's not going to be something that you watch on TV. It's going to be something that you experience. Colorism. What everything. I'm black. I'm 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 too black for some of the establishments. You know what I mean? I'm too black for some of the things that people think like people who look like me can't. The media is still struggling to show black love, bruh. So you understand that we are we seriously can I just Yeah no it? go right ahead. You can take it. No, I need to close it. It's, oh, okay, no it's problem. messages. Yeah. So um I had not one my dad was such a pan Africanist. And obviously, because it was dark skin. I, I think we, we are yet to really, really address the issue of the hate on dark skin. It's so crazy. That's why I don't even join other movements, because this one is still struggling. It's crazy that people fail to accept you. You haven't done anything. This is just you. You know what I mean? Like, you still need to. I saw Lizos doing the big girl concert, because the whole thing of this space denying the existence of people who look like me it's insane so when you are younger you have choices to make when you go through such when you you're constantly being told you are not good enough for this and the other you have a way of saying okay do you accept what they say or does do you allow it to make you depressed or do you use it for your own advantage and your own power luckily for me i did the latter because what it does, it says, you are not with us, so you don't belong here. But if you're going to take it from that context, you're going to be hurt. But if you're going to take it from, definitely I don't belong from you because I'm outstanding. That's why I'm standing outside. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing that is nice. You see how Dave Chappelle is? Dave Chappelle is free. He's yeah. a free, free artist. Man. Purely because he said no to you accepted <laughs> that you don't want to be my friend. It's okay, but I think we, we got hung up as dark skinned black people, whatever that you want to, whenever you want to just be on black excellence tip. I will move fire. We are here, I'm a fight over we long thing. We understand, and mm. some of them will put a podium with he love a threats. I know, but I swung thing is shit. So cool, man, hairstyle, hairstyle, like let's check it out again. There are, there's always this issue, you understand? But I think the power to take back from that is that to say, either way, whatever I do, it's never going to be enough for these people. And why do I even try to impress them in the first place? And how free it is that I can talk and say whatever that I like, because obviously they're not my friends. Do you understand how free I am? That's why people like to come and interview me. I don't have endorsements. I never had. So I don't protect anything. And now that I'm unemployed, shh, what are you going to take? Even cancel culture has nothing on me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to cancel? I like to know my What are you going to cancel? I said, I'm with uncancelable. What are you guys thinking? I'm, I'm, I am I'm uncancelable can, because... Even, even Kanye West. I'm uncancelable. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying you're me. <laughs> because, you know what I mean? The, the canceling people sometimes are questionable as well. Because there are so many people that might need to be canceled, but they protect them mediocre as they are but it's okay it's who they are but why am i even subscribing to whatever that you you've put out there mm. you know what i mean for me i'm 
And which is why I want to do what I want to do. Because I need to be on that Dave Chappelle, Trevor Noah, Lloyd, because I deserve. I'm that. And I'm not going to wait for people to tell me. Because I'm never going to. They didn't tell Nina Simone. They didn't tell Winnie Mandela. They didn't tell... They tried to not to tell Casta. Serena Williams, why am I counting? I know what I'm going to get. But all I know is that it's me, it's my God. Oh, don't worry. There has to be a Zulu girl that has a show at the Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And the world knows. And it's sold out. And it's going to be me. <laughs> and it's going to be me. I'm going to fly and come support. Because I'm like, either way. Vela Ninting. So, I'm saying, if I fail, it's fine. But I'm not going to get Mina? Yeah. That's what I want. I want to be able to have that whole lineup. Yeah, Celeste has a world tour, which is a real world tour. Scotland, because I can. And because what I have to say as well. It's beyond, it's not even about me traveling and the, it's about my voice and what I need to say reaching the people that it needs to reach. You do not understand the joy when I talk about racist issues to the club full of white people from England. How difficult it's, is that experience? It's, it's, an, it's a most ex beautiful experience. Is it beautiful? Because yes. Black people are the first one to feel sorry for white people's issues. Whenever you raise it, you are the mast. If we are inheriting traumas, they are definitely inheriting racism. But inheritance is the same. Mm. We can't be the only one inheriting mm. things. They don't inherit. How come? Mm. And that means they also need some work to do. When you tell black people all the time that we have an, uh, inherited some traumas, you have to work through them. White people have to work through why they hate. Wow. And it's not our job, that one. Because it's taught. It's not no, our job. No child is born hating another. Racism is taught. Finish. It's not our job. But it's our job to highlight it. Because it's happening to us. If there's one thing I, I need to do in this world is to make sure I protect and I say what I need to say without me being looked at my skin and whatnot. And people can talk about everything else. Have you realized that people can talk about sex? Talk about education. The minute you say racism to black, black people, like, hey, yeah, let's yeah. talk about inclusivity. No, even inclusivity is a shame. Because mm. once they include other people, they forget about yours. Mm. A couple of, like, literally, this has just been a consistent narrative over the past couple of weeks. The different interviews that I've, we've had. We've had um, Mr. Andy Lemkritama, we had Umkul Tsingiza, we've had Dr. Kula, and all of them are talking about the same thing. Mm. And it's not like they told each other or they watched. No, inclusivity killed us. you know us. what I mean? Because inclusivity... Because and sometimes I always think about him, Klambe, ingako ilizo la tatwa from go koko I kind of feel that which we still are till today, slungega kulu in such a way that we did not fathom, we did not think ugutu kono munyu muntu nga fani nati ongaze aze ngububi ganje obokuta zo sate lumshaba I think sometimes we're just so welcoming and you're just so nice. Yeah, but we sometimes, are. Sometimes you don't think good can do fucking your game clean. And, and, and which is why the spiritual work is important for us. Excuse me, because I read somewhere that black people, we are like the sun. Everyone charges with us. We're like a portable charger. That's why we sell energy. That's why we sell entertainment. That's why we are good at what we do. Because everyone else, racist or not, they're still going to have to get married with a Luda Van song. <laughs> the melanin the melanin you know what I mean? Like, like the magic portion. Yeah, I think our fault is us not working on our spiritual space to work for us. Because I want to buy tagat, I want to tagat, I want to tagat. I always say the same thing. I'm like, yes, guys. I want to buy tagat, I want to You know? No, no, no. It's not to say that. And that's another thing. I think that's why. This whole, I always say, I do not have a problem. Everyone else has their issues, but me, as a black person, dark-skinned woman, I'm in the, my life, I'm dedicating my life to fight the black fight. The people of color fight, yeah, it's for the people of color. Because what happens with the people of color situation? Once they put it together with the people of color, it's only the people of color that are winning. Black people are not. 
Wow, it's so interesting. Somebody said the other day, I forgot who were interviewing, but they were talking about how our black people's fight ended up getting infiltrated, mm -hmm. where the black woman's fight is now being also not really fought by the white woman. But it the is. White, but the white woman is joining the black woman, but when the benefits come, they conquered. No. They butchered people. White supremacists. What is supreme about acting in total fear and in total greed that you feel like everything in the world should be yours? Because that means white people's eyes are looking at the world. You feel like everything is not enough. And black people's eyes are looking at that. You feel like everything is enough. Now that's the difference. Do you know, for me, I've removed those words. I've, I've, I've said them the way they need to be said because I said this one more time. That's why I don't buy this feminist movement. I'm not a feminist. I'm a womanist. Because fem in this feminist movement, I'm sorry, there are a lot of bitches and witches there. And, and so there's a lot of stuff that we need to talk about that we don't and we haven't, are not ready to talk about. And I'm not going to come with a white person and white woman and say kumbaya situation. No, I'm sorry. Because when there was colonization and apartheid, Christopher Columbus was still getting a blow job. And then another woman can, <laughs> can sit <laughs> another woman here can sit and say, No, I'm a proud feminist. But do other women actually understand what feminism means? I will Especially only us in a black I community. will only join feminism and understand it once we don't have so many black women in rural areas throughout Africa. Like, I feel like if there was a feminist movement in this country, we should have a, a serious market for black women in the taxi ranks. A serious one. Explain. In a sense, I feel like what we fought for, um, what we are fighting for, the, f the feminist movement is telling us well, things that are highlighted. I don't know. Things that put me off. Is that I feel like we're fighting for things that really won't change our black situation. People, black they women specifically. They won't change our situation. They won't. Sexual freedom won't give me a kono. So it can't be number one in a hierarchy of needs. Yes, we need to be sexually free. But if we are in poverty, what use it is that I'm going around with the nipple? How, how am I? How am I? How is this helping me? In an immediate way, space. Do you understand? And I understand it's important, but we've moved the hierarchy of needs of what we want as women has shifted from what black women have been suffering from. But somebody else can say, but we've been living in a patriarchal world all along, being controlled by men. Yeah, but all I'm saying is the men control you because you don't have finances. Imagine, men, imagine women fighting for more financial freedom than sexual freedom. Now that's a fight. Because men are, are there with the power and money only. That's why they can't date women with money. Because without money, you guys are fucked. Would you say that you don't need a man? I do. That's a problem. I need money, I need men. Why do you want to separate the two? If I have money, well, what, what, what automatic conclusion did you drew and said, then that means you don't need a man? No. I need money because I love good things. And I know life is expensive. And I know as a black person, I must break the generational curse. But I need a man because I'm a human being and I'm a woman. What's that got to do with the other? Do you think there is a, an intentional agenda against breaking up the black family? Of course. And emasculating it is the, so the easy. black men? It is so easy. And, and, and I don't care who says what. And you see it clearly because right now, count and tell me, straight black men that now we look up to and celebrate. According to you, what is the meaning of toxic masculinity? You see, it's another phrase. Yes, there are men who are horrible as much as there are women who are horrible. And black women and black men i think this whole thing is to understand that we are in the same basket here yes black men have been fucked way too much because we must also understand men as a species whether they're black or white they're dumb do you understand where they're operating from because even white people are dumb their anger comes from being dumb their greed comes from being dumb 
but because they have money, we look at it as a, something that is nice and superior. And they, they, haven't, they haven't won anything. That's why they have a lot of issues with depression. Because the happiness doesn't really come from you grabbing everything from everyone. You know what I mean? Like the creed that has been shown from a European man shows that that person is insane. Why are we celebrating that? And when we understand that as black women and men, we are in the same basket, because now we are, they are separating us by sexuality. They used to do this with religion and education. Now it doesn't work. They need to do, they used to use sexuality to separate. Do you understand? And in the meantime, all black women are made to feel like, yeah, I'm strong, I'm doing this, I'm that. They just want us to pay tax. I'm, a, I'm well aware of that. So like the, the, the patriarchal system that came with white people and colonization, it's not like it's working for me. Yes, it's good for me to have money, but believe you me, it, it all thing was designed so that I can pay tax. It's good if, we, if you pay tax and I pay tax, then you pay tax only. It doesn't work for the government. It works for the government if we both pay tax. But now it doesn't work for the community if I'm by myself and you by yourself. Do you understand? But because mm. in the same breath, the issues that we're fighting for about who's a man, who's a woman, white women are still doing the same thing that is primitive. They're having babies. They're having families. How is this happening? How are they not affected? Why is it only us? Why do men don't go through the problems that you're going through? They're getting married. And it's not because their men don't cheat. And they don't do sh shitty things. They do. But you've never had white women say their men are trash. Which is what I'm going back to. When Christopher Columbus was colonizing people, he was still getting a blowjob. From who is the question? Wow. You know, when you, when you start talking about these topics, it does get a bit deep because one in their own thoughts, you start going down deep, the re deeper down the rabbit hole. And then just a lot of thoughts just keep coming. And I love the fact that as much as you're a comedian, there's a lot of us that did not know this side of yourself, but you you also are spiritually aware. I am. And a lot of people are not. Listen, my dream is to have a black family. That's my dream. I want black love. My sisters are married to white guys. Cool, cool for them. I say this with all good hearts. I tell it to my in-laws. Don't try. I'm not interested. I don't like it. That's not my dream. That's not what I want. I want a black man in my house. I believe in duality. I believe in balance. And I believe there are still good men out there. But I think there's a lot of horrible black men because they are not told. And because also, Skomanomain. Mm. That is Skomanomain. Mm. We don't ask for what we need to ask. We ask for money. That's the cheapest thing you can ask mm. from a man. And money, you guys can work for anything. Whatever that you want, achieving things is in, is in your nature. Because we but, are providers. But character. We are meant to go and hunt. But character like is a different it, ball of game. Mm. That's why I don't ask for money. Come sit here. It has gone. Who are you? That's good. Because then that's when have you a, see... Have a glass of wine. That's now. when you see who is the... Who is, you know what I mean? Because we... I think when we... We, 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 we operate in silos. I, yeah. Okay, wh what is the end goal? We want... We, do we just want women to be there in powerful and could not give a fuck and all men are rubbish? And then what? What is our end goal? Do we want our kids to have fathers? What is our end goal? Because even if we do brag about being single mothers, it doesn't work for us. At the end of the day, it doesn't work for us. It works for your ego, but it doesn't work for the child. It doesn't work for your soul. And it, it doesn't, doesn't work for and us. And it doesn't work for the black community. It doesn't work for us. Mm. I think we should ask better. We should... Period. I will not call you. Who's right? Yeah! You know, guys, the social credit system from China, where they're like... No, I'm telling you. We are dealing with people who shouldn't be dated in the first place. <laughs> and I'm not talking about rape issues. And I'm talking about gender-based violence issues. Mm, there's people like when you look into it, you're like, girl, you are not supposed to take this person from the first place. It's unfortunate, but now don't blame the victim. I'm not blaming the victim. I'm saying, before you are a victim, date better. Because if you're going to ask for a bag, because South African women are swimming in gender-based violence and Louis Vuitton bags. How is it happening at the same time? So there are people who provide these bags, but they're punching you. You are punching bag for the bag. 
We should ask for more. I don't ask for money. I ask for more. I want your character. Who's your mother? What is your principle? Who are you? Are you healed? Do you want to heal? Are you healing? Mm. Do you even understand that you need healing? Mm. These are the things we should be asking. Not this fucking shit about do, that they give me 10,000. But, bruh, if, and, and that's another thing that shows that we are not together. If we understand black women and men, black men, that we are all in the same poverty, and by this I'm including Sir Ramaphosa and Mtsaip, we don't have money. We don't. It was shown during the pandemic, black men had nothing to say. Money was talking, not you guys. We were with us in the couch, waiting to see Sian Nimsa Rizing. So we are together in this thing. There's more that put, put us together in a space of not achieving and not doing things than it is. Then this whole idea notion of saying, yeah, they must bring money and this is... It's annoying because you're like, from who? From who? From who? We should ask better characters that are building. Are you going to be with this person to build? You know? And also men, they need to understand and learn that this world cannot run on your, you know, liking whether you want to have sex or not. This, it can't be sexual how you drive your life. It can't be. And you, or no matter how many people you sleep with, if you don't know sex, you don't know sex. You can sleep with 50 people. That's why there's so, so many fuckboys who can't fuck, unfortunately. Mm. <laughs> That's right. There's a lot of But you know what I mean? Like, it's a, it's, mm. All I'm saying is we entertain a lot. Because I travel and I've seen what other women want and require from their men. Totally different than what we want. And that's why I'm single, because I want those things. And I understand that when you are with people on dates, they're like, huh? And I go, ah, forget about the back. It's a nasty scorn. It's a nasty scorn. Uba nunyok. Uba nunyok. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I think we haven't gotten there. We, we misunderstand why is this getting together and being in a relationship with someone is for. It's not for you to be fed. It's for you to grow. And to grow something with this person. Because, God forbid, that providing black person, man, you want, just because it's a provider, dies. You can't come here and just don't add anything. And you are just there. I, I, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get I it. Just like that line. You can't just come. You are just there. Like you are just, you know, five W's. Wazalwa, wapila, wata, wapele, wafa. You know what I mean? <laughs> five W's, I love that. Five W's. Hi. You know what I mean? Oh, man. You know, when last did you have a woman that sits in front of you and says, okay, it's smooth. So, you and, and parenting, Nigu, mm. what have you learned? You know, would you want another child? And that's why people go crazy because they don't ask each other anything. Hey, in this country, there are people in relationships for years. I must status, I must bank account, I must go to Chola, where's that child? I must make a man, I got 20,000, I want to come Come on. Wow, guys, I want Celeste back here. This is so beautiful <laughs> because for me, she's like, Celeste is like my own sister. You know, when I watch Celeste perform for the first time, a full show, I'm not talking snippets or TV or clips, like I went to Silver Star Casino. Ah, That's when I met damn. her family. You know that was the last went, big I show I did. <laughs> that was, I think, just before you went to yeah. International. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's and for nice. me to sit with you, Konamanj, and everything coming full circle, you sharing with me your successes overseas. Although it's only just... Actually, those successes were also disturbed by COVID. Yay! Because Guba Manje, Guba Ukula, Guba Ula. Hey, COVID, young man. Well, Guba Sila. Hey, COVID, you know when you were in LA? Yeah. Those were, like... Everybody's <laughs> cast. I know, I know. And some was on Fita. When that Nipsey Hussle thing happened, you were there, right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. was in LA. I was already few staying, months. I was staying in LA. Few me, months me, me after that. I was brought that. back home by COVID. Because mm. I was not sure when Zagala, and I was quiet because I didn't want people to know. We just put on at my second value plumber or can't. But when COVID happened, I was like, I didn't think I can because I don't know when Zagala, you know, mm. and I've been here since. My first travel after two years was just two weeks ago, nine years in. I felt so great because I've been here at home for two years. Now I'm maybe going to go anywhere. I, and, and, and this is like you. You are a person who travels every month, every week. 
Now you have to sit for two years. Yeah, I know. Sure. And, and for sure. me, it was nice because COVID happened just when I came back from LA because I did the Toronto, New York, and I went to LA, which was January, February. My pale February. After a week, I came back. I did a show in, in Durban the following week, and I did something for Showmax. The next week, Kwa Got to a COVID. So you understand, I've already planned, and Ben Patera, people from uh, comedians from LA, are like, when are you coming back? Are you? Uh, oh, I'm like, yo, I'm Mina, I mean, for the first six months of COVID, Ben Patala ma renta itu. Ben Patale LA, Ben Patala na like hi. Because Mina did not know what the COVID is all. Nobody knew the whole world. Mister, yeah. we were down here casting time for a few weeks. We are booing. Oh, I'm sure we're over. Hi guys, COVID. Sure, oh, that was too much. Celeste. That was too much. But I then again, it came with a lot of lessons. What are some of yeah. the lessons that you say you take away from COVID? To be honest, it was shocking. It was, but on a deeper level of spirituality, I was like, yeah, it had to happen. After maybe about my April, I was like, yeah, actually, yeah, this thing has to happen. We, as a society, sometimes even whether it was created, conspiracy or not, whatever you believe in, how this pandemic happened, the more, the bigger thing here is that God is always at play. We were fucking around as a society, as people. And I believe that after this, that's why even after every, because you realize that this is happening like the, when you look at history, it's the same thing that happened in the early 1900s. Back then, yeah. Yeah, because oh, immediately mask, after yeah, the mass, there was war. There was World War II. Mm. Now there's this mm. war. So then there's going to be the boom mm. because things are into perspective. During COVID, I knew that I loved being a comedian. And I accepted and I took it in to say, actually, yeah, I must not be ashamed, you know, feeling sorry for myself or doubt that I want to do, be a biggest comedian in the world. Yes, I want to, because I can. And because they need my voice. And because there haven't been anyone like me. And because I represent so many people, there was so many things that said to me, yes, you are the person for this task. That's why God hasn't given you certain things in your life. My life is designed to be a best comedian. I don't have kids. When I travel, I travel. Do you understand? I don't have a husband. Like, sometimes, that's why people are like, why are you not happy? Are you, know, are you feeling sad whether you don't have... No, it's because I've realized that what God gave me is for this task. It's exactly for this task. Maybe I'll find the love of my life somewhere out there, but me bringing my voice that is needed in comedy, coming from me as a black African woman, I need to be there. Not as a supporting, not as a no. I'm a main comedian. I, like, I see myself in, as Dave Chappelle. I do. And I say that without flinching, because I am. Ah. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh no. Yes. Tell me about other stuff. Uh. Exercising, what not? I'm struggling there. Come in. No. That's me. Self aware, knowledge of self, confidence. Oh, yeah. And I've realized people like me who've been genius, because patriarchy and colorism has done two things deprived. The I people am on my girl. What's your <laughs> but it's Friday. Okay, last week. Last, 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 guys, it's a Friday. Guys, it's a Friday. That's very funny. I'll go down my room and she's my sister. Hey. Hey. It's okay. I'm going to paint things. 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 I'm going to paint you know what I mean? Like those women who I look up to, and everyone else will say, "Oh, you kabangu to sinina Yes, because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because what patriarchy and white supremacists have done is to rob not only the actual talent or the actual genius person to share what they have with the world, but it's to rob the world as well mm. from what Nina Simon could have given us, from what Winnie Mandela could have given us. We will never know the things we are going to gain from her by the society and the patriarchy in the party to allow her to be. 
you understand? We are now being robbed of Casta Semenya's talent. We are being robbed. It's not only on her. It's not only her that is being robbed. It's us, I know. It's got nothing to do with me because I don't get that money personally, but seeing her doing her thing makes me do my thing better. Mm. Do you understand? So I know now that definitely I'm not in the world where even now when they say they, they're playing black love, there's always a light-skinned woman with a dark-skinned man. There's always, there's, some, there's never black love. Just, just fucking give us two black people who love each other. Why is this that difficult? Why do we have to go, oh no, but he's me, no. Can we just get black love, which is why I have an issue with the whole people of color. That's why they fuck us over. Because it's like, no, but it's inclusive, no. We haven't had this opportunity of seeing ourselves in this light. Let's see ourselves in this light. Why is it that difficult? Why is it that when a, a woman is transitioning to be a beautiful person, it has to be light-skinned? Why? Are we that primitive? And then we claim to be ahead of time. And no. For me, because I'm still in the back of the queue, I feel like everything that has been done is not enough. So I'd rather do it myself. She's just said for her, being at the back of the queue, our, our women are at the bottom of the entire chain. And I'm mm. talking, when I say our women, I'm talking black women. Black people are at the bottom of the food chain. But the, per the person who's at the bottom, bottom of the food chain is the black woman. Yet, Ekbe, Ekbe, that's the God. Yet, <laughs> even, even when you look in any state, do you understand that in South Africa right now, people who buy properties more are black single women? Is it? Hmm. Including oh, coupled know. and single men. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Because we've gotten to that point where we like, actually, we can. And I do understand to, to some extent when women say, well, I can do this by myself. It doesn't work for us. It works for our ego, fine. But because we can, though. I understand the woman that said it because they can. I don't have kids, but right now you tell me that I must adopt five kids, I can. I know this from, without flinching that I can. Nothing, nothing. That, that's an easy job. God gave us that ability. And it's something that whether you like it or not, you can't take away from us. And, and also which has made most black women angry because I think as much as we have that great ability, we must use it for our own enrichment, for fulfilling and giving ourselves love rather than to fight. We fight a lot. I was saying to Penny Libyan, brah, we can't be as black women constantly 90, saying, yeah, men are trash, yet at night we're praying for a man. Which one? Something has to give. Something has to be said in a different way. Something has to be analyzed in a different way. I'm not saying we are wrong, but I'm saying it doesn't work for us. Because we, then eventually we don't attract what we want. We can't manifest what we want when we don't vibrate at that level. To vibrate at a level of love, you have to surrender to that. And understand that when you meet another black man, you don't meet a statistics, you, need, you meet a human being. So you can have a conversation as a human being, not as a statistic, not as a, you're one of the trash people. Then right there, subconsciously, that, that thing won't work. And it's, it's in the words, it's in the mental conversations we have with ourselves. It's in the mental, mental structure of what we believe in that manifests. That's why I never say I'm depressed and all that shit. I know it's a big thing. Mental illness is a big thing. But hunger is also a big thing. Me, I'm still fighting for things that we've been fought for since 1983 so miss me with the other stuff it's not me i'm dealing with the other one because now we are here nursing people i was in london white people they're still they have a government call you call a government when you are bored you don't have a friend <laughs> i'm telling you serious this is the honest truth change what does that as work goes and support people who are lonely and this is as someone who works but they're, they're suffering from loneliness. Do you understand how much they're taken care of? Do you understand? Mm. That's like government taking care of. It's not 911. No one is kidding you. You are just lonely. And it's a 911. There's a, like, there's a department. No, 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 no,
talk. Angita bana manda matoka. Pena 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 there's a lot that we're dealing with politically historically personally whatever it is but it's a lot but try to unpack it before you just immediately call it depression and tired no you are broke you are broken you are fat you have to pay for black tax name it so you can work on it but if you put it in an umbrella space you are inviting this thing that you can't control and everyone else is sitting here thinking, May I, uh, am I going to kill myself? Oh, uh, no. I still need to be a billionaire, sorry. Mm. I can't. For the history, for the... I need to... There's, there's, there's work I'm doing here. So stop putting a bandage. Instead, yeah. Instead of dealing with the actual yeah. root cause. Yeah. Exactly. If mm. the root cause is the fact that the government fucked up, yes, the government fucked up. Let's not be scared to say that. So that we can heal ourselves. It's been 27 whatever years of fucking up. We need to fix that. Then we're not going to go around and... Because now I think people go with the misdirected anger and unsatisfied emotions. You know? That's why people are rushing. Should I be a, 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 whatever, a feminist or should I be depressed? Which group should I belong to? You don't belong to any group. Just unpack what goes through your life. It's life at the end of the day. And I think as a generation we forget that whether we are advancing this life in however way we think we are progressing, life is still life. It's one thing we can never gonna microwave. It's life. It's still gonna hurt, it's gonna miss people, it's gonna lose people, it's gonna give birth, it's gonna have misunderstanding, you're still gonna lose the love of your life. Like this thing is happening. So we are not immune because we are in this generation of life. Do you understand? Life is not immune. We still want to go through life. But because we want everything, and then even when we get what we want in life, we claim that we, it's our own doing. Right there, the lack of gratitude and the level of just being ungrateful is proportionate. It's crazy. Because little things of being grateful, understanding this is not you, understanding it doesn't come from you, it's God, humbles you and keeps you in check and gets you to understand that this is life. Do you understand? Like, I think that's where we must get into. Be honest about certain things. When I was going to London, I was like, no, I, some priorities had to change. I sold my car. It was a fuck up. I sold it. I, and I don't have a problem whatsoever. People are like, what? no, there's Uber. I'm even lucky there's Uber. It's not like I'm in the rural areas. Mm. There's Uber. I have a driver. I have someone to come. Why am I worried? I'm going to get the car. Now I'm dealing with other stuff. Traveling is important. Otherwise, I'm going to go crazy. Trying to look like a Celeste that people think I am. Oh, whatever that you think I am, I'm a work in progress as much as I'm a superstar. Mm. There are some certain things oh, I'm still working on. Oh. You know what I mean? Like... I think we're putting a lot on I'm ourselves. We're a work in progress because we turn to be too hard on ourselves. We are in a generation that is exposed to so many Im images of people that are portraying such a, a very, very successful life that they're also not living that then penetrates all the way down to our children or our youth's subconscious you know? minds that they believe they're nothing and they always feel some sense of validation and they always just need that dopamine to always be to, to to be validated over and over and over so much so that when you're not ready you're not ready yet you're only just 21 you're only just 27 you're still building you're still young you're even when you're when 30, you are 30 even when you're 38 this you are still shell. Young. I'm, I'm 43 i'm still young Smoo. do you understand mm. in different ways when i do this i've been doing shows during COVID and everyone else, and I knew didn't make any sense why I do, do the shows in Malia Peta because the thing is about me. 
my shows had to make sense. You've been to my show. I have a band. <laughs> yeah. I don't want you to. I don't want you to come. I can't be here and claim that I'm a best comedian. And Gu- guys, we're telling you. Come to my guys, show. If you have never checked out a show, go to Netflix right now. <laughs> you know. Um. So when you when you when you when you when I do the shows, I sell culture. In my last show, I had Lebo Mashile on my show. Ah. Killed it. Hi, Lebo. How are you, my sister? Kill like ah. murder did. And because even her, she was like, thank you. Because there I was on a show where I can do any poem. You just gave me the audience. And I was like, but we should curate our own culture. We should determine what is culture. We shouldn't wait for channels and media to sell us. Well, now, the way we are doing comedy, we try to incorporate and then white people believe this is their idea. No. I can have a band. I can have a poet. We, we sometimes, the rules of media tend to undermine the intelligence of the audience so much. Mm, say that again. Say that again. Most of the rules of media. The rules of the me- of media because they're selling to, corporate. They undermine the intelligence oh, of the audience. Wow tend to undermine the intelligence of the audience. It's about, I know, who told you? Who told you that black people can't sit there for 30 minutes and listen to poetry? Who told you that we are are below that? Who said this must be for the elites? Who are the fucking elites that should be entertained by the real culture and, and arts that is encouraging and inspiring until now we get the riffraff of yeah, it must be naked, they're gonna love it. Who's which audience are you talking about? Me, I do not undermine my audience's intelligence. I know they're gonna get me. I know it's what they want. Beyond the riffraff of just let's do what is happening and what is hip and what they, it's going to give numbers. And what is trending. Numbers is not mental, it's numbers. Numbers it's what boxer cash and carry fight for, but they're not Woolworths. <laughs> you're talking it's about, fine. You're talking about my clients now, Pelham. It's okay. I sell more for It's <laughs> my numbers. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, we can't now think everything needs to be sold through the channel of numbers. Mm. Otherwise, why we have Rolex? Mm. So why is that there's this umbrella understanding that when you more especially when you entertain black people, it must be a bit of a rubbish thing. It must be wretched. It, it must, must be wretched. Naked, it must be no. too loud. No. You know what I mean? Lebuma Lebuma got a standing ovation before she did the second poem. Ntosh was like, fuck, now I must go after and do I was like, yes. <laughs> As a comedian. Every comedian there. As much as they had other what what comed poets, after one night because we had two nights, the first night, all comedians knew what I was doing, including the audience. Who should listen to Lebu Mashile only? Isn't she writing for us? So why is this placed for only the who's the fucking elite? We need this culture. It heals us. It makes us better. It, we resonate. This whole thing of dumbing down black people, for me, it's annoying, which is why I love my, cult, my, my craft, because it's giving me a chance. When I was there at the Leicester Square Theatre, all those Angolans, Ugandans, and Ghanaians, and South Africans, and all those black people understood me very well in my political jokes, because that's what they need. They were laughing, they were relieved. They have so much pent-up issues from work, from all, so many issues. I relieved them. I can't come there and be showing them a nipple and then thinking this is, their, this is what they deserve. Who came up with this idea? Because I don't see any trailer park media saying, yeah, white people need trailer park trash shit. No. That's the problem. Mm. That's the depth that she has, guys. And she can <laughs> go on the whole day as much as I can go on the whole day. I love her so much and I'm very proud of her successes over the years. I'm sure a lot of you guys are inspired. If you didn't know her story, it's not the last time. She's going to come back and when we reconnect again, we're going to be catching up on everything. She I want what you're wearing. This thing is nice. I've been looking at it. I'm like, yo. Oh, you cool. mean this? You know, it's so cool. 
Amazing. Yeah, bo. I love it. I actually bought this at the Rosebank flea market. Is it? So I sometimes bump into people who are wearing like expensive jewelry. Yeah. So I've, I've been offered thrice. I've been offered expensive jewelry in exchange for this necklace. Are you serious? And I'm always on some noise. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. But you it's know, one beautiful. of the things I like about it is that it also has got like some South African colors. Oh yeah, it's so got it's, a Zulu like, thing going on. It's Hey, <laughs> Like that, guys. <laughs> guys, <laughs> let's see. Let's, let's, let's be honest about certain things. South right? African. <laughs> it's South African, fine. But Zulu's... Be, it's like saying... You know what I, You know, okay, let me say something. But Tum Zulu's option graduates. Let me... Let me... <laughs> oh, was, oh, Felix, but I'm a bonus, but you're not text me, and who's a text me, and I'm a man, I reckon. Ah, y'all, who is a message? You're not a native. I'm not a native. I'm not a native. I'm a native. Guys, let me say something about Zulu's there. I understand, and I get it. If you are not Zulu, you're gonna feel like it's a. It's a, this is not me being tribalist. I'm not tribalist by a mile. I love everyone. I love every oh, black person oh. in the world. But what we have as Zulus, <laughs> we have this thing. I think if Zulus were were white in some way, they were going to be like English people. We are, we are the major colonizers of some sorts. <laughs> I must say this. But you guys, but oh, sorry, finish it's, up it's, it's based on respect our culture is literally has a lot to do with respect and where you are and what you've done in life in whether you're a man or woman you know the certain respect there's colors for the beads there's, that's why i'm like if anything is solid because all our lives like every almost every zulu woman that is my age i don't know about the younger ones but i know that when we were growing up we were, we were taught how to be a woman. We, you don't have to get married. I'm a single girl, but I need to get stuff. I do all this. This domestic thing that people are discussing for us, it's like, what are you talking about? It was a way of life. Whether you are single or you are with someone, you will know how to cook and have dumplings and stuff. But when certain people, like in an event, Zulus, you, you can learn our culture from that event how we treat men who are eating their kids women i know yeah patriarch no some of it was meant for you are not ready for this conversation that's why we're discussing certain things are kids ready to hear this or not zulus have got that on lockdown you are young you are a young wife sit with those people that's what you need to hear you are a young man sit with those men that's what you need to hear you are young enough to have this sit with your own group so that you can, you understand? So the, the, there's a lot of protection of when you are growing and what you must learn and what you must take in at every stage that you are ready to take in. Our culture is solely based on that. And which is why then it becomes a, hey, you can't do this, Zuru's are like, hey! Because whether you are a nurse, you are my wife. And I think that's where we have issues as working women. I love femininity, and I love it for that sole reason. My husband, if ever, whoever I'm gonna get married to, is gonna be spoiled, in a sense that I am that girl that wants to be in the kitchen. I don't wanna do the tires and the what, no. What am I trying to prove here? Working, fine, because I need to bring money. I understand the political climate, I understand where I am. But being at home, I wanna feel feminine. I want to, I don't wanna feel otherwise. Why should I be competing with a man at every ten? No. I don't care if I cook the whole week. But you're going to go for a car wash. I'm not doing that right. You understand? Mm, like, because I'm not a man. No. A I don't want to. No. Mm. And, and, and because for me, it has been such an important thing to do in my life. Because my work, I'm always in a space that is much more masculine. Personally, ooh, I, I'm a girl. I don't care. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> her name is Celeste Ntuli. We're going to hang out again. Uh, let's say, but now, now it's 2022. We're going to hang out again, let's say 2024. I'm going to yeah. give her next year. 
I'm gonna I've, give I, it next I, year. I, I'm coming after uh, after my one hour on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> Then 2024. Yeah, just, just, just before the the, 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 what is this, New York <laughs> place or the what? Oh, oh you mean the, the medicine? Yeah, garden. just before yeah. the medicine. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, you, I'm giving you the, the first interview. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> guys, she for, said it on for, camera. Yeah, I said it. Guys, she said it when we've got 40,000 subscribers. When she comes back to Siche, we'll be sitting on 200,000 subscribers. At least by that time, we'll be half of where MacGyver is. <laughs> but you know what? What is beautiful is that we are all growing. South Africans are blossoming. Techpreneurs, entrepreneurs, mm. comedians, Congratulations, musicians, you too. Like dancers, you. Gabo. You, you are Gabo, amazing. You're changing Gabo. your, your hoi hoi. <laughs> Smooth a hoi hoi. It's a cool song. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing too. And in the interview, the way we are so talented as South Africans, we are, so talented as South Africans we are not even aware. Bruh. Because everybody in South Africa is so talented, so much so that we think that's normal. It's not normal. You only see it when you leave the country. When you get to other countries or when you get overseas, number one, what's beautiful is that just being from South Africa, that on its Alone. own is a conversation starter. Yeah. And then doors get opened. And when you start opening your mouth, people get shocked at, as to what you've achieved back home. Yeah. Because South Africa, we are such high achievers that when you are here at home, because there's a lot of us who are so talented and who are high achievers, it seems like it's normal. Yeah. But it's actually not normal because when you leave the country, you start seeing Listen, overseas, a lot of people look up to South Africa. Let me be honest, people were dying there in London at that club. I was like, you? I wanted to bring my people. I'm like, I will. <laughs> but that's no scumba we can make this thing. <laughs> Let me be honest. And, 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 and I hear what you're talking about. Loiso said the same thing. Loiso called a shout out. I love him so much. Shout out to Louis. Oh, I was man. with him at um, Uses Kuli Robert's funeral. May Kuli so oh, rest in peace. Sorry, like continue. I was in London, I couldn't. No, it's okay. It's I okay. couldn't believe it. Like I'm still, yeah. I'm still not like I'm. I'm. I, I still hadn't accepted it. Yeah, yeah. Because I was away, so I didn't. Hey, we went through COVID. We've lost a lot of lives. And I know that this, <laughs> this interview, when, when, when Asiles, is going to exist for the rest of our lives. Yeah. There's going to be a moment where you and I are no longer in this world. But, but I, there, there's going to be an audience there that is watching this interview. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're doing. But I've, it has been my dream to do a breakfast show with you again. <laughs> So say that again. To do a breakfast show again with you, like, oh, like no, I'm, I'm, us. Yo. I'm a morning person, just like you. So I'm your morning, breakfast shows I'm are always, person. yeah. Uh, that's why it was. Too. That's why it was working. Whenever I came to Method. Massive Net when we were yes. doing the breakfast, I'd be like, if I was not inspired at that time, <laughs> I was ready to do that breakfast show. Yeah. Mm. You are you know, dope. You are dope. You are such a. You have such amazing energy in the morning. You, you are such an amazing. You are. You, you are the whole meditation manifestation of the like your energy in the morning there are few people who have who are morning people mm. and, and and because i know i am one yeah i draw from you yeah, yeah. same here it was amazing Gabo, I you know? like, <laughs> i know you walk into us Hi. good morning Hi. <laughs> that was insane. So much noise with that so was much insane. Fun. That was insane. But you know what's beautiful, Celeste? All of those young people who were serving us mm. at that time at Mass. And that's not a long time ago. That's hardly three, four years yeah. ago. All those young people who were shooting us on camera, who were, you know, Bespa Tuma, Bespa. Mm. It's hardly three, four years later. Abanya Basema Power FM, Basema 702, Basema Prime Media, Basema SABC, Abanya Basema TV, because that's what's beautiful about uh, passing on the skills that you have and mentoring younger people. Because yeah. just a few years later, you get to realize, wow, that's little nice. did I know would have played such a big role in this young person's life. No, you I did. was just doing my job. Oh, I was just trying to be nice to this young person. You did. That and then was... at that time, they're no longer a young person at that time. Say, Baba Dala. Because yeah. Celeste, you know what I'm experiencing in my life now? Forget Massive Metro. I'm just saying my entire career. Yeah. I'm experiencing people who are now lawyers, who are doctors, who are more intelligent, who are older. Some of them are rich, very yeah. successful. Who are like, Harutman, in the look, jail, go to ta. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, ta. One guy direction in Sasin to Anang Lahi Ling as Wooden Land Elevan. I'm glad Wooden Land Elevan. For some reason, one guy direction. This is what I'm doing now. This is who I am. This is what I own. This is what I, for me, that's what's fulfilling more mm -hmm. than in you. 
and get all the things that you've ever dreamed no, of. No, I will. Definitely, yeah. I should. Like, chilling with you guys, it's safe. <laughs> uh, it shows. Yeah, and now we are shooting. Yes! We are going to die easy, no fire! Extracted. Yeah, how about it? Extracted, right? I'm going to fool them all fire. I'm going to die more fire. I'm going to die more fire. Oh, you're going to play? Yeah! You vodka? That thing, I'm going to die more fire. I love you, Silas. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. This has been amazing. Guys, thank you so much. This is my sister. Guys, this is my, you know when they say sister from another mother. You know what's up. But in voice, you have a name. Yeah, no, my voice. Hey, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the Hello, but hey. Get to me now. Guys, she's going to the top of the world. Yeah. She's already traveling the world, she's on Netflix, she's everywhere, but this is only the beginning. The first Zulu girl to be international in the comedy space. Watch out! I love you. <laughs> High five, sharp, my boy. Guys, we'll see you on the next video. <laughs> this is The Hustler's Corner.